All right, we're going to move into the lymphomas here. We're going to start with non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. Now, I will have a video on Hodgkin's lymphoma as well. I'm going to go into a little bit more detail here, and then when you watch the Hodgkin's lymphoma, you should have a pretty good background. These present pretty much the exact same way with one little exception with Hodgkin's, and we will get to that in the other video. Uh, but these get tested a lot, including the chemo regimens, so you'll want to be aware of that. If you haven't had the chance yet, please consider subscribing to my Patreon. You can get there by clicking the link in the description of the video or on the i button on the upper right hand corner. I very much appreciate all the contributions that I can get to help offset the cost of these videos. And I thank all those of you who have already donated. Definitely subscribe to my channel and you'll get updates and notifications as I put more and more videos up. All right, let's start with a little vignette. We got a 59 year old man coming into the clinic because of incessant night sweats and fatigue for the last two months. He says he has a hard time paying attention at work, which he's attributed to age, but does not understand why he's having night sweats. He's physically active, doesn't smoke or do drugs. Past medical history is significant for major depressive disorder, which is controlled with menlofaxine or Effexor. No other medications, vitals are within normal limits. He's lost 25 pounds since his last routine visit nine months ago. Physical exam, it just shows non-tender cervical lymphadenopathy. Now, anytime you got a patient with a non-tender lymphadenopathy, you better be biopsying that lymph node uh, because lymphoma, um, it could be lymphoma. Okay, so what stands out? Well, the night sweats and fatigue. Um, you know, fatigue, yeah, it's common as you get older. You can't really do quite as much as you could do when you were younger, but night sweats is never normal. Night sweats is never normal. Now he is on venlafaxine and night sweats is an adverse effect of venlafaxine. And that may get thrown at you because usually when we think night sweats, we're thinking menopause, uh, cancer, or venlafaxine. Um, there are other drugs, but venlafaxine is a common one that causes night sweats. Now, he's also lost 25 pounds. That is disturbing, along with the night sweats. So together, we call these B symptoms. Uh, fatigue, night sweats, weight loss, um, those are B symptoms. We'll come to that in a little bit. And then he's got this cervical lymphadenopathy. So this is a picture of cancer, um, likely lymphoma. So our differential is non-Hodgkin's lymphoma, Hodgkin's lymphoma, acute myelogenous leukemia, adverse effect of venlafaxine, and hyperthyroidism. Hyperthyroidism can cause sweating, can cause weight loss. Not so common in older men, but we do have to keep it on our differential. It's very easy to test for. All right, so lymphoma, what is it? It's a malignant proliferation of lymphocytes that collect in the lymphatic system. So it's kind of like leukemia of the lymph nodes. Okay, so this does not really occur in the bone marrow. It doesn't start in the bone marrow. It originates in the lymph nodes. So Hodgkin's lymphoma is a specific form of lymphoma that's characterized by the presence of reed sternberg cells. Non-Hodgkin's lymphoma is all the other types of lymphoma that don't have reed sternberg cells. And that's basically it. It's a pathologic diagnosis. Uh, the stereotypical symptoms include the painless lymphadenopathy and constitutional features like fever, weight loss, and night sweats. Those are collectively known as B symptoms, and we got to pay attention for that because that changes the prognosis. There may be an abdominal or testicular mass. There may be nerve palsies, particularly a facial palsy or an oculomotor palsy. And the B symptoms don't always have to be present, um, but uh, in this case, they'll tell you... Um, if the patient has an incidental painless lymph node. So they will be very clear about that if the patient does not have B symptoms. These are the risk factors for non-Hodgkin's. This tends to happen in older people, median age of 67, slight male uh, predominance, autoimmune disorders is associated with that, um, infectious agents, uh, exposure to pesticides, herbicides, uh, past chemo and radiation, so look for cancer history, and then genetic diseases like Down syndrome. So um, compared to Hodgkin's lymphoma, non-Hodgkin's lymphoma tends to present at a more advanced point. Um, so you may find those nerve palsies and uh, dysphagia. Uh, it, it really just depends on when they present. But uh, as a rule of thumb, NHL tends to present uh, later on in the stage. Now, 
When you have a suspected lymphoma, the best initial diagnostic test is always, always, always an excisional lymph node biopsy. You can do a core biopsy too, but what you never do is a fine needle aspiration. That's fine in tuberculosis, but we do not do that in lymphomas because uh, really what we're looking at in lymphoma uh, is we're looking at the, the histologic pattern. There's not gonna be abnormal cells. These are normal cells, and they're cancerous, but they appear normal. Uh, and so you're not going to be able to tell if you just get a, an aspiration. So this should be done for any painless lymph node. That is very suspicious. Painful lymph nodes happen all the time. Painless lymph nodes, no bueno. These are the different types of non-Hodgkin's lymphomas. You will not be expected to know a whole lot about this on step two and three or ABIM, but you will be expected to know these on step one, unfortunately, because it's a kind of a pathology test. Um, do know that diffuse large B-cell lymphoma can, um, can be a complication of, of chronic leukemia, you know, the Richter transformation. If you don't know that, go back to my chronic leukemia talks. Um, and then there are a number of others. Follicular uh, will come up on step one. Malt comes up on step one. Um, mantle cell will come up on step one. Marginal cell will come up on, or marginal zone will come up on uh, step one as well. So what do we do to work up this guy from our, our vignette? We're gonna do that lymph node biopsy. We're gonna get a CBC and BMP. It's never a bad idea to order you know, your basic routine labs, see what you can see. And then because you know, there's a possibility of hyperthyroidism, we'll just throw in thyroid function tests. And what do we see? So the lymph node biopsy is abnormal, but there's no Reed Sternberg cells. So what does that mean? Not Hodgkin's lymphoma. CBC, BMP, thyroid tests were within normal limits. So like I said, fine needle aspiration of the lymph node is always the wrong answer. Once you've diagnosed NHL, the next step is staging. We do two things. We do a whole body PET scan and a bone marrow biopsy. And this will help us stage the disease, which helps with prognosis. Now, if a patient has neurologic symptoms like a palsy, then you need to get a lumbar puncture to check for lymphoma cells. So get your CSF, um, and then a cytology on that. Now with this information, we can stage the disease. This is called the Ann Arbor classification system. Most of the time you will not be expected to know how to stage, but if you do, this is one of the more common ones that they would test. So stage one means you just have one lymph node group. Stage two means that you have two, but they're on the same side of the diaphragm. This should say diaphragm here. Okay, same side of the diaphragm. Stage three means you have two or more on both sides of the diaphragm, and stage four means it's involving other organs, aka metastatic. Now, although there are many forms of NHL, they're treated similarly. Oh, isn't that a great thing? They're treated similarly, less to memorize. Um, so with this guy, our next step is gonna be the whole body PET, bone marrow biopsy. We also wanna get hepatitis panels and an LDH for reasons we'll go into. This is the staging system. And it's, by the way, the same for NHL and lymphoma. All right, so the treatment at any stage, and we'll see this is different with Hodgkin's, at any stage, the treatment is RCHOP. RCHOP, okay, that gets tested. Radiation may also be part of therapy, and if they have CNS disease, you would add methotrexate onto these four or five drugs. So. You do need to know for sure, you have to know the side effects of medications. So rituximab, sudden death and tumor lysis syndrome are big. Um, anytime before you start rituximab, you need to add on to your orders to get a hepatitis panel. We're looking for hep B. Cyclophosphamide, hemorrhagic cystitis, hydroxydonurubicin, uh, that just like all the other anthracyclines can cause dilated cardiomyopathy. O for Oncovin, also known as vincristine, is peripheral neuropathy, and P for prednisone can cause a Cushing syndrome. Now, on CCS, fortunately, brand names are on there, so you can just type in Oncovin. So you can just use your, your mnemonic and just type the drugs in. However, CCS generally expects you to act like a primary care doc, so you probably will not be prescribing um, um, chemotherapy, but it can come up on your multiple choice questions. So RCHOP is the one tested on boards, even though there are other chemotherapies available. And then know about tumor lysis syndrome. And know that allopurinol and vigorous hydration is the treatment. However, allopurinol is often given prophylactically. 
this is how I remember it. The NHL backhand chop. I'm a big hockey fan, so this wasn't a difficult mnemonic for me to make up. But, you know, there's a backhand. He chops the puck into the goal. So remember, NHL backhand chop, okay? And with Hodgkin's, it's a different chemotherapy. Hodgkin's lymphoma is ABVD, and we'll come to that when we go into Hodgkin's. So with our vignette, we're going to consult hematology, oncology, know your drugs, We'll consult radiation oncology. We need to get the hepatitis panel if it hasn't been done. Looking for hep B. Cancer diagnosis counseling. Reassure the patient. These are some notes for straight out of my medical school notes umpteen years ago. Um, this does not get tested on step two or three, but it does get tested on step one. So you can take a look at this, print it out if you want. Um, this may or may not help you. I don't know. Help me. And then the same with the leukemias. So um, on your uh, step two or three, you're probably only going to get tested on one, and that would be this one. All right, recap. NHL is a malignant proliferation of lymphocytes that collect in the lymphatic system. Lymphomas uh, generally present pretty similarly. NHL is distinguished from Hodgkin's based on the absence of Reed-Sternberg cells, which, remember, are those kind of owl-eyed cells. We'll come to that in the Hodgkin's video. Lymphoma should be suspected in people presenting with painless lymphadenopathy, and the best initial test is an excisional lymph node biopsy. can be done in the office. The diagnosis is based on pathology. After diagnosis, get a PET scan, a bone marrow biopsy. That's for staging. And the Ann Arbor scheme is, uh, it may come up on two or three, definitely ABEM, though. Uh, the treatment is RCHOP, rituximab, cyclophosphamide, hydroxydinorubicin, Oncovin, and prednisone. This is a chemo regimen that's tested, so know this one and know the side effects.